Hi guys, my name is Bex and welcome back to my channel and today I'm bringing to you my December wrap up. December is here and gone and today I'm bringing to you my wrap up of all the books I read in December. Now December was a really 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 good reading month. I was really impressed with my reading and I ended up reading 11 books in the month. I think many things contributed to me reading 11 books. The Magical Readathon Christmas at Hogwarts occurred which I ended up reading four books for. There was a readathon with Fairy Loot which I read along with and many anticipated reads I kind of forced into December to be prepared for the new year. So without further ado let's get into the stats for December. So with the 11 books I read I ended up reading 3,413 pages. Of these 11 books four of them were fantasy, three were sci-fi, one was historical fiction, one was contemporary, one was dystopian and one was a superhero book. And when regards to type of books six of these were physical books, one of these was a comic book, two were graphic novels and two were audiobooks. With regards to rating we went from a 2.5 star all the way up to a 4.5 star so no two stars or one stars and no five stars so it was a kind of average to good reading month and I'm excited to share with you the books I read so let's get into it. Starting from the book I liked the least working my way up to my favorite book of the month the least favorite book I read was Pride by Ibi Zaboy which I gave 2.5 stars. Pride is a Pride and Prejudice retelling that follows our main character Zuri who has Brooklyn Pride, Family Pride and Pride in her Afro-Latino roots. But her neighborhood is rapidly gentrifying and she doesn't really recognize it anymore and that is when the Darcy family moves moves in next door. Zuri wants nothing to do with the Darcy boys but her sister does and Janae starts falling for the charming Ainsley. Zuri cannot stand Darius who is arrogant and kind of condescending but with their siblings spending so much time together they need to find some common ground. Now this story kind of follows them their potential romance and it is not very good. I did not like this. I feel like a lot of factors could add to the fact that I did not like Pride. One, I have not read the original classic Pride and Prejudice. I really like the culture and heritage kind of aspects that were weaved through this, but the relationship between Darius and Zuri was honestly just insane. It was developed out of nowhere and the main character Zuri annoyed me to no end during this story. If the relationship in Pride annoyed me I probably wouldn't like the classic Pride and Prejudice if that's the way kind of it develops really really sudden and out of nowhere and kind of built out of more anger than anything else I do not think this book would be for me. I could not look past it. I did think the main character was a little bit ridiculous at times. She was very possessive and protective but also she could not see that the way she was acting was probably incorrect as well. I know this story was not written for me. I cannot speak to the culture other than the fact that I was thought it was done really well but you would need to look at more own voices kind of reviewers to get a more sense of whether this book is good or not. I didn't like it. I gave the 2.5 stars. I could not connect to it in terms of the relationship and of the main character. It just didn't make sense to me but maybe you will feel differently. The next book on my list is a three star book and that was I Hate Fairyland Volume 4 Sadly Never After by Scotty Young. I was super disappointed about this book. I love the whole I Hate Fairyland graphic novel series. It's really fun and it follows Gertrude who always dreamt of going to Fairyland and then she is sucked into Fairyland and can't get out and now she's about 40. She's angry, she's bitter, she's murderous, she's killing everybody and this was a really really dull and bland ending to an amazing graphic novel series. It's kind of like they put it together and they're like eh, that'll do. I think the graphic novel art style is fantastic, it is beautiful, it is colorful but it's also a little bit gruesome but the plot was just like it felt like it wasted my time a little bit if I'm completely honest. It felt like it was just a filler to get us to the end of the series so they didn't have to write it anymore. So yeah that's a no from me. Okay moving on to number nine on my list and that is The Extinction Trials Exile by S.M. Wilson. This is the sequel to the Quarterly Club's book pick last quarter I think and I I'm kind of reading this one because it's easy and it's fun and it's just a cool adventure story that I don't have to use much brain power in reading. The Extinction Trials follows Storm Chaser and they're living in a dystopian world where there is nothing left. We've kind of stripped the land but over the sea there is a lush place called Earth Asia and there are dinosaurs but it's also green and lush and provides food but it also provides dangerous animals and Storm Chaser is kind of 
thrust into that world after she joins the trials just for food but she ends up being quite good at the trials and going to Earth Asia to get DNA from the dinosaurs for the scientists. Exile follows on from there and I really enjoyed it. You wouldn't think that I enjoyed it because it's so low on my favourites but I read a lot of good books after this one. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. The writing isn't amazing. Every chapter kind of ends in a really cliche suspenseful like well what are we gonna do now sort of thing and it's I'm sorry that voiceover was awful and I'm embarrassed it's easy it's adventurous it's fun and I don't know why but it's kind of become like my guilty pleasure read and I'm really enjoying it so excited to see what the next one brings and yeah it's all right. Next up on my list is number eight, and that is Undying by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This was provided to me for an honest review by Alan and Unwin, so thank you very much, Alan and Unwin. If you would like to see my written review, you can find it down below on my blog. I will leave a link for you. But this is the second book in the Unearthed duology, following on from basically exactly where we left off in Unearthed. Unearthed follows kind of a long extinct alien race sending a message to Earth, and Earth kind of intercepting it and seeing that there is a planet out there that holds Earth's solution. So Earth is again destroyed. It's kind of a dystopian world but with a sci-fi twist. We've destroyed the world so now Earth's looking for a place to kind of help technology and help us get the Earth back to the environment that it should be. So this is where we find Jules Addison who is a scholar and is going there for research purposes to help the world. And then there is Amelia Radcliffe who is just there to scavenge and get money to buy out her sister's contract. They meet and kind of go into an alliance together and that is where this one heads off. It was a fun adventure sci-fi but it leads back to Earth and it was good. But I feel like when I went into this one I thought it was going to be the same as Unearthed but Undying is actually a very different book to Unearthed. Where Unearthed had traps and puzzles to solve, Undying was kind of just a book that was solely based around how do we save the human race. Amy and Megan's writing is beautiful together and you can't tell who's writing, whose perspective, which I love in books written by two different authors. But I think the writing style in Undying felt more middle grade than YA. It was a lot younger than I thought it was going to be and it was still an entertaining read but it just wasn't good as good as its predecessor. But if you're looking for breaching into the sci-fi genre, Unearthed and Undying are definitely one I think would be for you but just keep in mind they are a bit younger and they read more adventure story than anything hard hitting. The next read we are heading into a four stars so yay for some awesome books and that was Spider-Man Deadpool Volume 3 Itsy Bitsy by Joe Kelly and I am so glad that we got back to the original Spider-Man slash Deadpool because Volume 2 was a disappointment but Itsy Bitsy went right back into where Joe Kelly left off in the first one and I adored adored it. There is a new big bad in Spider-Man slash Deadpool, Itsy Bitsy, and Itsy Bitsy is kind of a mash of Deadpool and Spider-Man and then it's also trying to kill them so it was really really cool. It was fun. The art style was back to normal. It's just really really colourful and bright but the banter was back between Spider-Man and Deadpool which is the whole reason that I read this one if I'm honest. The banter is fantastic and I'm so glad we have got back into the normal kind of writing style for this comic and I hope they don't change it again because Volume 2 was not good, but this was much better. Working our way up, we're on to number 6 now on my least to favourite, and it was The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater, which I gave 4 out of 5 stars, and this was the Garbage Gang's book pick for December, January. I think our live show will be January. Not sure, I'll let you know when it is. But this is the fourth and final book of The Raven Cycle, and this is my most disappointing book in the series in my opinion. The Raven Cycle really ends kind of flat in this book. I loved most of it. It was adventurous and amazing and the friendships kept developing and the there was a lot going on to the characters which was fantastic and it is a very character driven book but then the end kind of leaves you with like blue balls. It's kind of just like uh, it wasn't a great ending and it kind of left you really underwhelmed because it was like oh that's it but now what? Love the characters, love the writing, but really just a flat boring ending. Moving on to number five and that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco and this one I kind of picked up on a whim in the middle of the Christmas at Hogwarts readathon and I loved it. Like I was so shocked that I enjoyed it. I also gave it a four out of five stars but it basically follows 
Audrey Rose, who is kind of wanting to be a forensic scientist. She wants to work out why people have died and she starts kind of interning with her uncle. She is highborn and she is supposed to be a proper Victorian lady and she's just not up for that and then murders start happening and Jack the Ripper starts kind of devastating London. She is drawn into the investigation of Jack the Ripper and she will not stop until she has found out who Jack the Ripper is and it is full of twists and turns. I didn't expect who Jack the Ripper was. It builds to be someone but it's not that person which is really really shocking to me. It was atmospheric, it was dark, it was really I think well written to history like it was really really accurate and I adored it and I can't wait to read the next one because honestly I didn't think I would love this and I really really did. So this is my historical fiction read of the month and yeah four stars it was really good. Next up is number four and it's another four stars it is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden and this story follows Vasilisa who lives in the Russian wilderness with her family. She has been told tales of sorcery and folklore and of spirits and the thing about Vasa is that she can see these but when her father remarries seven years after her mother's death. The woman he marries is highborn and is a devout Catholic and does not honour the old gods. They kind of stop leaving out sacrifices and foodstuffs for these spirits and the spirits become angry but there are growing dark forces in the forest and Vasya might be the only one to save everybody. I thought this book was really hard to rate. So the first 180 pages were so slow. It was dragging and dragging and dragging and I didn't think I was going to finish it. I thought this was going to be a DNF but I pushed through and over the halfway mark wow this story got really really good. Obviously there were some pacing issues but by 180 I was so so intrigued with the story and the folklore because I've never read Russian folklore before and oh my god I really adored it. It was really really good. I feel like the first half could be like condensed a little bit so it was more entertaining but it was kind of like a slow burn book but I'm glad I really liked it in the end. This could have been a three, could have been a four. I went for a four just because I really really loved the ending but I could see how people would give it a three stars. We are getting into my top three now. The third being Saga Volume 9 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. This book was really really good. I really enjoy Saga. Saga is like a Romeo and Juliet in space with different alien species but the different alien species shouldn't be together so they people are trying to assassinate them is basically what's going on. This is the last book before the authors take a hiatus and I'm really sad about the hiatus because this book ended in such a way that I was like why would you do that to me? It was probably my favorite volume though so I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The characters are growing and they're developing and the story is getting a lot less funny and a little bit more serious which I'm really really enjoying but it still has that little witty banter and it still has like random nude sex scenes and stuff like that so really enjoying it. Don't know what I'm going to do for the year break but 2020 the series will be back so can't wait to wait for that. Next on my list and second favourite book of the month was The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is a copy I got from Alan and Unwin so thank you very much Alan and Unwin for sending this one to me for an honour to review before release date and I cannot wait to review this for you guys. So this one releases on the 8th of January and I to highly recommend it. I loved it. This is the second book after The Cruel Prince and The Cruel Prince follows Jude who after seeing her parents murdered she is taken to the Fey land to live with the murderer. And when she goes into this Fey world it's kind of hard for her because the Fey hate humans. They think they're kind of little playthings and they bully and they like maim and they see how much they can hurt them and it's it's really really like trigger warning for bullying um, but The Wicked King follows on from where we left off and I adored it. 4.5 out of 5 stars. I read this in just over a day. I think it took me two days and I flew through it because it's just an easy read and it's really fantastic but it also grips you like it's very hard to stop reading and I adored it. So yes the Holly Black writing Faye. She writes it in a really dark way like I've never read Faye before which I really really love and this story ended on a cliffhanger as well so can't wait to wait for 2020 to get that one as well so fun times ahead but really really good. And now we are here at my top read of December and it is Skyward Claim the Stars by Brandon Sanderson and oh my gosh 
This is so good. So this is a story following a girl named Spencer whose world is kind of always under attack. The Krell issue like an onslaught constantly against the human race on this planet and they are constantly trying to fight back. Spencer has always dreamed of a pilot but since her father is a disgraced pilot she does not get as many opportunities as everybody else. She finds it kind of a way to redeem herself from what her father did. And this sci-fi novel goes from there following Spencer kind of in like a pilot school to the battlefield and it's really really good. I read this one with G from Book Roast with Fairy Loot because they do a read along of their books every month and this is the Fairy Loot edition that is absolutely beautiful and this story was really really good. It was action packed, it was adventurous, like it was so much more than I thought it would be and I've never read a Brandon Sanderson book but I think the world building and the characters were really fantastic and I can't wait to dive into more of his novels if this is like the ballpark. It was really really good. I highly recommend this to people who like sci-fi and I can't wait to read the next book in this series. And that is it for me today guys. Those are the books that I read in December and I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you like to see more and have not already and chat to me down in the comments. Let me know what books you read in the month of December. I would love to hear. I don't think January is going to be that good of a reading month for me. I am away for over seven days so my reading is going to really really lag but I think December really just smashed it out of the park. I cannot wait to see what 2019 brings but that is it for me today guys. I make videos every Monday and Thursday and I'll see you in a new one. Bye!